All right, here's another episode of 9mm Plus P versus 357 Magnum in short barrels. And today what I have is the Liberty Ammunition Civil Defense. I had someone request to see the 357 Magnum in both the 4-inch barrel and the 2-inch barrel. And we will definitely get to that where we're going to test the uh, this round through the 4-inch barrel. But today what I want to do is compare it to the 9mm. Interesting ammunition. These hollow cavities are just gigantic hollow cavities. Uh, what these are as they are copper bullets. They are solid copper and then they are nickel plated So the the actual the actual nose of the bullet is like very very thin it, it's almost paper thin and The mass of the bullet doesn't really start until you get into about the case mouth of that cartridge But the 9 millimeter is a 50 grain and the 357 Magnum is also a 50 grain So this should be a really good comparison Little bit different size hollow cavities. The nine millimeter is rated at 2000 feet per second. That is very fast, but it's only 50 grain. The 357 Magnum is rated at 2100 feet per second. So hundred feet per second faster, but typically 357 is short barrels really rob that energy versus something longer. So we're gonna go through the chronograph and see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then as always, we're gonna go through the juggernaut box which contains a one and three quarter inch pack of the bologna to kind of simulate flesh, covered by four layers of denim, followed by one quarter inch medium density fiberboard to simulate ribs or sternum and into water jugs to catch this bullet. And normally how this compares to ballistics gel is typically out the back of jug three is 15 inches, out the back of jug four is 18 inches. We go back to two, it's about 12 inches. Typically most good defensive ammunition always stops and the third jug with nine millimeter and 357 magnum so we'll see how these compare to others so let's get started with the test all right i'm about four yards from the chronograph about five yards from the target we'll see how close we get to that 2,000 feet per second no read it seems to be imprinting pretty far to the to the right and low 1887. No read. 1935. 1852. I'll have to run a couple more. Get a couple more readings here. No read. Should have read that. No read. I'll run a couple more. This is one of those rounds I was a little bit uh, skeptical it would read because they're so shiny, so I colored some of them with a black marker. Um, but I did test a chronograph with ordinary ammunition before this, and it ran perfectly fine. So, try to get a few more. No read. I'm going directly over the bars here. 1937 so we'll take what we got there uh, not very consistent up and down up and down with those velocity spreads so let's try the 357 magnum and see how that compares all right i'm going to aim a little bit higher because those nine millimeters were kind of dropping low and i wanted to address uh, comments i've gotten several times sometimes i say that i will fire in single action because i don't know the recoil impulse so i'm a little bit afraid of pulling those shots low and people laugh at me and say, well, that's not a thing. Uh, but they don't understand is if, if you're expecting a lot of recoil on double action, you may have a lot tighter grip on that revolver. And then when that shot goes off, you can, you know, pull that shot down. And we pretty much avoid that with ammunition that we don't know by, by going single action. So that's why I am going to go single action. Um, with this round so we'll see what we get the 357 1688 that's got a lot of um, sound Sixteen eighty nine. Sixteen nineteen. Sixteen twenty two. That's obviously an error read. Um, 
Let me run one more and see if I can get a reading with these. Those four were colored in marker. This one is not. So, let's see what we get. 1727. So, th those velocity readings are just kind of all over the place there. Uh, interesting. Now, let's hit the ballistic box and see how these two compare to each other. All right, through the ballistic box, the first round is going to be the 9mm plus P. 50 grains. I, I don't know what to expect here. This is going to be interesting. So, we'll see what we get. Surprisingly not hit with a lot of water, but the baloney pack is way back here and pretty much destroyed. And a lot of damage. We're missing a lot of that meat. I actually aimed way up high and it's still, just like on the uh, target, it's coming down and to the right for me. But where it did hit, a lot of damage. So let's see what we got in water jugs. And this is an interesting look on this fiber board because the entire board is cracked. I typically don't see that very often. Um, kind of a triangular hole. So that's different than, than typical as well. All right, first jug has a lot of fiber board in it and it blew the whole bottom out. Doesn't look a whole lot different than most nine millimeter plus P rounds. There are pieces of, of copper in here. Job two. I don't feel any indication that this dented out the back of jug two. So this is gonna be comparison to less than 12 inches comparison to ballistics gel. And what we have left looks like a hearing aid battery. That's all there is. This is all the bullet there is after that nose that is paper thin. So that's definitely interesting to say the least. Um, the 357, not as fast, so we'll see what that does. All right, 357 Magnum, we're moving a little slower, so we might get less fragmentation. So we'll see what we get. That round has a lot of flash and a lot of concussion. A lot more than I'm even comfortable with with these on. All right, baloney pack here. This has a lot of denim and a lot of damage. That is some pretty nasty damage there. And what we have through the fiber board is interesting. Here's where it impacted it. It's oblong. But there's no way that bullet could go oblong because it would fragment. So that's what we got. So let's see what we got in water jugs. All right, jug one has a lot of fiber board in it. Not a huge amount of damage. There's definitely fragments of copper in it. These fragments are a little bit larger. The one with the nine millimeter, I really couldn't even show because they were tiny, but the ones with the 357 are, are relatively large. Jog two, we have an impact in two. And this one does have a dent out the back of two, so that is 12 inches comparison to ballistics gel. So let's see what we got in here. And to be expected, there's no difference. Just looks like that little battery again. So, this ammunition did not impress me at all. The 9mm was okay, relatively efficient. Um, not a lot of recoil in the 9mm, hardly any. Um, and it did a lot of damage without over penetration. The 357, on the other hand, after I shot those rounds to the chronograph, my hand and the gun was all covered in unburnt powder. So that is definitely not a good short barrel round. That is going to be a little bit slower burning powder. It's not burning up in, in the revolver. Uh, so add that with the excessive blast, excessive flash. 
I don't find it to be a very good short barrel round. The nine millimeter on the other hand, it will work okay. Uh, I'm not really impressed with it, with it, but it would work. So that's what you get today with the Liberty Ammunition Civil Defense, both 50 grain and 357 Magnum and nine millimeter plus B in short barrels. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.